Hey guys, I'm Patrick and in this video I show you 10 deep learning projects that you can do with your deep learning framework of choice. Many of them are beginner projects but I've also put some advanced ones in there and I will also tell you which data sets you need and where you can find them. So there's a link below the video which points to all the resources. And if you want to learn PyTorch or TensorFlow first, then I have courses on both frameworks here on my channel, so you can check them out. And now without further ado, let's get started. So the first project is the MNIST dataset. And yes, you might have heard this already a million times. So if you are bored by this, then feel free to skip this. There are timestamps below the video. But if you are a complete beginner, then the MNIST dataset is probably the first project that you should do. So this dataset consists of images of handwritten digits from 0 to 9. And your task is to correctly identify these digits. And this task is fairly simple, but the project should teach you how to get comfortable with your deep learning framework. And you should learn how to train and build your first artificial neural network and then evaluate it. And it also right away teaches you how to do multi-class classification. So this is not just a binary classification problem. And yeah, that's the first one you should do. The second project is the Cypher 10 dataset. This project is similar, but it's a little bit harder than the previous one. So the Cypher 10 dataset consists of color images of 10 different objects like birds, airplanes, dogs, and other objects. And your task is to correctly classify them. So the task is pretty similar, but now it's a little bit harder to get a good result. So now instead of just using a feed-forward neural network, you should now learn how to use a convolutional neural net and learn how they work. And by the way, both the MNIST and the Cypher 10 dataset are included or built in in PyTorch and TensorFlow. So up until this point, you don't have to worry about loading the data, but this will change in the next project. The third project is the cats and dogs project that you can find on Kaggle. So as the name says, this dataset consists of images of only cats or dogs. And this task is simpler than the previous one, but now the challenging part could be to learn how to download the data and then load it in the correct format and give it to your model. So this can be tricky if you haven't done it before. So try this out. And if you are really ambitious, then you can even submit your results to Kaggle and compete in your first Kaggle challenge. And to get a really good performance, you might try out a technique that is called transfer learning. So this is a very important concept in deep learning that you should learn sooner or later. So now would be a good point to try this out. And if you don't know what transfer learning is, then I have a tutorial here that you can check out. The next one is in a field that I'm personally very passionate about and I'm sure that many of you will find this interesting as well. So back at university I specialized in medical image and medical data processing and the medical field is in fact one of the most common use cases of deep learning. There are a lot of applications out there that help to detect diseases or help physicians to make their diagnosis. And for example, if you search Kaggle, then you will find many challenges that deal with medical data. So here you can help to improve these applications and bring your knowledge to a good use. I selected one particular project for you here, which is relatively easy for beginners. So this is about breast cancer classification, where you have to train a model and correctly classify the cancer subtype based on 2D medical images. So breast cancer is the most common form of cancer in women and accurately identifying and categorizing the cancer subtype is an important clinical task. So if you can come up with a reliable automated method here, then you can save time and reduce the error in hospitals. Up until now, we had four computer vision tasks. So now let's switch the field and go to natural language processing or NLP. This is another field where deep learning is widely used. So now instead of images, we deal with words and sentences. And to get started, I recommend the disaster tweet project that you can find on Kaggle in the NLP getting started section. Here you have to classify if a Twitter tweet is about a real world disaster or not. Now this is a good time to learn about RNNs, recurrent neural networks, and LSTM, long short-term memory. These are two special types of neural nets that typically perform really well with text data. Now this will be a little bit more challenging, so we slowly leave the beginner projects and go to the more advanced ones, but it's absolutely worth learning about this. 
Next, I suggest a project I think almost everyone will enjoy, and this is about chatbots. So build your own chatbot from scratch and put it to test with a simple example application. To get data for this task, I can point you to two open source data sets that should be enough for the beginning. The first one is the conversational question answering data set provided by Stanford NLP. And the second one is the Google natural question data set. So if you don't know how to get started here, then I have a nice tutorial where we implement a chatbot from scratch together. And I promise that once you've understood the concepts of RNNs, then building a chatbot, maybe not a very advanced one, but still a decent one is pretty doable. And this will be a ton of fun. Now let's go to a task that almost every company needs. So have a look at Spotify, Twitter, Netflix, YouTube. They all need recommender systems. So based on the information they collect on the user, they want to suggest other content that the user might enjoy. And to get started with recommender systems, I'd suggest the movie recommendation system. So for this, you can either use the MovieLens 100K dataset or you can use the official Netflix dataset that you can find on Kaggle. And now this is also a good time to learn about a technique that is called collaborative filtering. So you could solve this with the classical data science methods, but you can also use a deep recommender system with a neural network. Next, let's have a look at forecasting. This is another interesting field where we deal with time series data. And here again, you can practice your knowledge about RNNs. So here we want to predict the values of a time series in the future. And a very popular example, of course, is stock price prediction. So I recommend to just do this. And to get data for this, I actually recommend to scrape or download your own data from Yahoo Finance. This is not too difficult. And there is a dedicated Python package, Y Finance, that you can just use. So get some data and then use the data up to a certain point in the past to train your model and then evaluate it with the data up to the present date. And then with this build a model to finally predict the prices in the future. And yeah, who knows, maybe you build a good system and get rich. All right, so for the last two projects, I have two advanced computer vision tasks for you. And first, let's have a look at object detection, which is also a very popular task. So here, the goal is to identify the specified objects in an image or in a video and then mark them. For example, draw the bounding box. So you have to check if the object exists, then you have to mark it. And you even have to deal with multiple different objects in an image. So this is indeed a very advanced task and you could implement this from scratch. For example, you could try to implement the YOLO object detection model from scratch, but I actually recommend to just use a pre-trained model for this. And then you still have to implement the whole object detection pipeline around this. And you also have to learn about OpenCV here. This is a very important library in computer vision. And for example, here it's used to draw these bounding boxes. And as data sets, I can point you to the raccoon data sets. Yes, here you have to recognize raccoons or to the annotated driving data set, which is used to train self-driving cars. So as last project, I suggest to have a look at style transfer. This is another very interesting use of deep learning. So here we train our model and we can then feed a style image to the model and it can apply this style to any new image we show the model. So this is really fun and you don't have to implement this on your own again here. So I recommend to just use an existing project. For example, there is the TensorFlow fast style transfer project on GitHub or the PyTorch fast neural style implementation. So both are just fine. But then to retrain your model for your own style images, you have to use the COCO dataset. And the COCO dataset is a large scale object detection, segmentation and captioning dataset. And this is actually one of the most important deep learning datasets for computer vision. So you should definitely check this out and have a look at this. All right, so these are the 10 projects that I can recommend. And let me know in the comments which ones you like and if there are any other projects that you can recommend. And also, if you enjoyed this video, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. This helps me a lot. And then I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.